Well, hello, everybody. We are thrilled to be here. I'll start the clicker. Um, as you can see, we are here to have a good time with you today. It's, we're going to give you some great information, but we don't take ourselves too seriously at PSI, so we thought we would have some fun. Yes. My name is Gwen Cooper. I am the CEO of Patient Services. I've been in this role for about 15 months. We are the um, oldest charitable assistance program in the U.S., and I have a background of about 25 years in healthcare, both on the patient advocacy side, on the payer and the provider side. And when I took this role, my biggest aha moment was, why is this so confusing? Why do we feel like, we'll see if it works. Okay, best laid plans. We have to get our rat, uh-oh. Hopefully this, there we go. All right, so why do we feel like a rat in a maze? <laughs> why was every question I asked filled with, well, I don't know, let's go this way, let's look this way, let's see if we can figure this out. So we started feeling like that rat in a maze, and then we thought, well, we can't do a workshop about that. Yeah, we can. You know why? Rats are generous. They're affectionate. They love being around people. They even, they're creative, and they even get depressed if they're left alone too long. So we thought, well, we're like rats. Let's be rats. We actually raised them growing up, so I have a little bit of an affection for them. So it all started because when I took this role, my health insurance changed. I always had fabulous health insurance. I worked for very large corporations that were self-funded. I didn't even ask any questions because everything was covered. It was easy to get my drugs. Then I took on this role. Our, our family's pretty healthy, but I had this one medication that I had been on for years, and I went to get it filled. It was three times the price of what I paid before. And I said, why? <laughs> So I went to the pharmacy and I said, this is three times the price of what I paid before. Can you fix this? They got, I found me a coupon, put it in, and it went from that $128 for a 50-day supply to $50. I'm like, okay, still more than I paid, but I can, I can deal with this. That's fine. Fortunately or unfortunately, COVID's been going on forever. We did not have to move when I took this position, so we hightailed it back home, because when you have an eighth grader who's not in school and you're moving him to a new community, he says, Mom, I want to go home. <laughs> so, took the same prescription to my home state to the same chain pharmacy, and guess how much it was, $128. I said, what's going on? I said, Tierra, help me. <laughs> And I think we all know that the answer to Gwen's question is easy. The insurance and the prescription coverage that we have under each plan, it changes based on the state that we live in, right? I am Tiara Green. I am Patient Services, uh, VP of Patient Services, and I've been with the organization for eight years helping our patients navigate their health care. So we're going to start today with a little question for you. So if you have your phone, if you could pull out your phone for me, you can either go to the Swap, call, swap Card app or you can visit menti.com using the code that you see here on the screen. And we want to know from you, what is your or the patients that you serve biggest health insurance pain point in one word? And I can see some of you have already gone into our survey on the Swap Card app and put in your one word. Um, you can see the words that are largest are those that are most common. So what we see here is that cost is the biggest concern so far. So we can't go through all of the words that we see on the screen, but we are going to go through coverage and cost. Those are very important for our patients. And the first thing that we want to consider is that open enrollment happens every year. We remind our patients every year that they have choices, whether they're in Medicare, they're receiving coverage through Marketplace, or if they have employer-sponsored coverage, they have choices. Uh, confusing as it may be, we are all here to assist our patients in going through those different options. So we'll go through four insurances that most of you are familiar with as you are working with patients or going through them with your own coverage. Um, the first one is Medicare. Medicare, uh, I call alphabet soup for the patients because it has multiple parts, part A, B, C, and D, 
but it is for those who are over 65 and some who are deemed disabled. The important thing here and the most frequently asked question that we receive is, what do I do if I'm 65 and I'm still working? Do I consider going off of Medicare, um, my group coverage or do I go to Medicare? And we always encourage to talk to your employer. If you want to continue with your employer-sponsored coverage, you may be able to do so without any penalties. The next one that we want to talk about is employer-sponsored coverage. This, we know that the plans may be different based on the employer, may be offered a health maintenance organization, a HMO, or a PPO plan, but we know that they are all different. We know that there's a strict in-network, if it's an HMO and if it's a PPO, it may be easier to get to their specialty practices. The next one is employer-sponsored coverage, and it's similar to employer coverage. These are a little different in that the employee pays their portion, the employer pays the portion, right? And the insurance company is managing the payment, but the employer is covering their care. And this can be very difficult for patients who are in these self-funded plans with the astronomical costs that are required. When we think about employer-sponsored coverage, the truth is that 49% of Americans have employer-sponsored coverage, and employers are, employees have employer-sponsored coverage. And employers are required to provide 95% of their full-time employees with affordable coverage. What does affordable mean? I think it's different for every household. But the way it's defined in the marketplace is that it has to be under 9.83% of their household income. So our patients have choices and we have choices. And the final one is marketplace insurance. Marketplace insurance, we are all aware of, whether it is through federal or state-based coverage, our patients have choices. And depending on their income, they may be eligible for a premium tax credit or those cost-sharing reductions so that they can receive the care that they need. So when we think about all of these different options, where does our patients go? Where do they go from here? There are two things we want our patients to keep in mind. Number one, are your physicians, facilities, and hospitals covered under that plan? Are they in network? Because if they're not, we know that the costs can quickly add up. So when looking at plans, we tell our patients, look to see if your preferred physicians are in network or out of network. You can see the price difference on the screen for a practice that is in network versus out of network, and it can quickly add up. The next question is, are your medications on the formulary? We give these patients these questions so that they can make informed decisions. I looked at four different disease states and the cost associated with random medication for each of them, and you don't see the, the medication name here. But what's interesting when I was looking at this is that if you look for a brand medication when a generic medication is available, it was not covered at all. Actually, the cost for that medication B under out of network, that 28,000 says that it's not covered. And you can see for medication C, it is not covered either. So let's think back to Gwen's scenario. So you saw a lot of those rats in the maze, and I think this should play again. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> a lot of the information that we've shared with you, you may say, I already know this. Why are you bringing this up? We're in the field. We talk to our patients. But here's the thing. You're going to see some words popping up on this screen. There's a lot of things happening in the industry right now that you need to be aware of. One of those is my own, another example of just one of my kids needed a, a very inexpensive uh, medication for a skin infection. When we went to the pharmacy, it wasn't covered. The pharmacist was ph phenomenal and said, go down the street and you can get that same drug for, 14, for $4, or you can pay the full price here. So we were appreciative of that. But let's go on and look at all these words that are being thrown up on the screen. As Tierra mentioned, 49% of Americans have self 
are working for an employer that provides some form of self of insurance. So we're going to talk about the new plans that are coming out there. And if you know about these, great. Come talk to us and tell us what you're hearing. Reference-based pricing is a new model for self-funded employers. And what this model does is they have negotiated rates for the Medicare plus 30% 30 or 50% above the Medicare price. So they're working with providers, negotiating prices to try to keep the cost down. Sounds great, except that this has not translated to the employee, and employees are getting hit with surprise billings. So here, simply check your bills. Talk to your employer. Say, this doesn't seem right. The second one is interesting. This is a narrow network. And what this is, it's not a PPO or an HMO. It's a variation on the theme. It's where an employer will say, you can have $400 a month premium instead of the $600 a month premium, and you will get three hospitals and 300 physicians at the lower rate, or you can have 12 hospitals and 3,000 physicians at the higher rate. And what we're finding is this is starting to catch on for lower compensated employees and younger employees, but not for those that have a provider network. They would rather pay the additional premium and keep their doctor, hence why we said keep your doctor. Another one is value-based pricing, and you may have heard of this as concierge medicine, where some of you will go ahead and pay a per member per month to your physician, and then maybe potentially not turn something into insurance. Where I worked um, prior to coming to PSI, we had concierge medicine, value-based medicine, but what we had is we had physicians on staff full-time. We didn't have to pay any co-pays if you use those physicians. It was wonderful. We also had a preferred hospital network. That didn't work for me because I lived an hour from my employer. So for me, I got the half of the benefit and all of, I mean, it, was, it worked. It was wonderful. So this is catching on as well. And then the final one, well, actually, those are the value plans that we were going to talk to you about. In the last few minutes, we wanted to show you all these rats in a maze and say it can get clearer with good education good information and lots of FAQs, which you will see on our website. Then you've got this nice uh, picture here of the drugs that are glowing. And there are many pharmaceutical plans that have been hitting the market recently. The, the one that we have found uh, interesting that we wanted to discuss is specialty carve-out. This is not good. What happens here is a self-funded employer will work with a third-party administrator, and they, in, they mandate that their employees use the formulary from the specialty carve-out third-party administrator for specific medications. In this room, we can guarantee you that's a disaster. So I called a friend of mine who's a third-party administrator. I said, what is going on here? And he said, any TPA that would engage in that is not working in the best interest of employers. And that's not really what's happening very frequently in the industry. But he thought I was talking about a new specialty carve out. What this is, is the import and export of drugs from the US to another country and then back into the US at a lower cost. Now, we don't represent anybody, of course. We represent our patients. But when he was telling me about this, I said, hold on, how are you figuring that out? Employers are taking their highest cost utilizers, putting them in a specialty carve out, and then negotiating prices with an overseas PBM to bring the, the drugs back to the US through a pharmacy that they're working with, and they are saving money on the back end. The employee is still, sa is still paying the same co um, copay, excuse me. Okay, interesting. That's the import and export drugs. Multiple PBMs, this was interesting. This is happening in um, a New England, employee, uh, New England employer that he's working with, actually has contracts with four PBMs. And what he does is he takes that specialty group or that high cost utilizer group, and then he shops on behalf of the employees the best price among the four PBMs, and then everybody gets the savings. So that one we don't think is, is that terrible either. And we'll have to see how these um, play out over the next several months. I think we've thrown a lot at you within the last 15 minutes or so, um, but there's good news here. There's good news in that the rat can get the cheese or our patients can get the assistance they need. We can get the assistance they need with 
all of us coming together, right? So we thank you for going through this insurance maze with us. If you are interested in joining our patient advocacy coalition, please feel free to scan this QR code and sign up on our website. You will also see frequently asked questions on that website. You can add a question as well, and we will update this to include answers to your questions. We thank you for your time, and we hope to see you at our booth. Thanks.